This is absolutely nuts. I mean, the free agency this year has been crazier than I remember for quite a while. So we have to go now and look at some of the dynasty impacted players and tell you whether we're buying, selling, or holding them. We're going to give you a complete list of these guys that have been affected by these deals this week. Let's start with the Atlanta Falcons. Kirk Cousins obviously going to the Atlanta Falcons. Kirk Cousins, we saw a slight bump in his draft capital from a dynasty standpoint when we did three back-to-back-to-back startup mock drafts on one of our live streams, and he was going at about the sixth round every time. He was going seventh, eighth round, so you saw him get a one to two round bump going to the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Uh, I think the contract installation is what did that. Right now, it's I'm holding Kirk Cousins. I'm not actively buying him at this price. I mean, he is a you know 30-something-year-old quarterback. On, he's on a four-year deal, though, and has good weapons. So Yeah, I mean, the deal at face value looks like a four-year deal. I think he was guaranteed $115 million, so it's probably three years guaranteed and then they probably have an option for for the fourth year but i mean four years 180 million contract insulation for a 36 year old coming off an achilles like what more could you ask for for a guy that you know is going to provide a ton of passing volume and this is no longer the arthur smith offense so we're actually going to have a team that you know throws the ball to their weapons so like they're good weapons let's have the discussion now about Pitts in London because we got into this, this on our debate. live stream and yeah. this is honestly something we saw Kyle Pitts jump from like the mid seventh round up to the mid fifth in our startup mock drafts that we did again this these values will settle so don't take these as gospel but we have a very small sample size to get you guys this content really quick and so the about a two round jump the the highest I saw London jump was the four one and so I think by this we're clearly saying that that Pitts gets a bigger boost than London here, and I'm yeah. not exactly sure that's fair. Mm. I, I, and I want to clarify this because I had somebody mention on the live stream. I, I don't think we're having recency bias on Pitts because we want to acknowledge that Pitts was good enough to get drafted top five. Okay, so he was a unicorn tight end prospect. He's a tight end that's really utilized more like a receiver. Um, he he really is like. Pitts is not the check down wide receiver that TJ Hawkinson is. I think you can see that in some of their advanced analytics. But in our opinion, I think you share this opinion as well. I think Drake London gets a bigger boost from Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta than Kyle Pitts does, in my opinion. And I don't think you're seeing that reflected so far in the ADP. No. And and let's not kid ourselves here, too. Like, this is a new coaching regime. This is a completely different situation in Atlanta. They have no loyalty to Kyle Pitts going into his fourth year on a rookie deal. Like, in a lot of ways, this is kind of a prove it year for Kyle Pitts. So, am I willing to go out there and spend a mid fifth round pick on a guy that I'm counting really as a cornerstone asset on my team? <laughs> no, not not on a tight end because he's a tight end in a bare landscape. Why would I? Why, why wouldn't I just spend a, a round earlier? a pick on a guy like Drake London, in my opinion. Yeah. And we did this actually, we had this conversation. It was funny a, a year ago going into 2023. Um, we said Drake London or Kyle Pitts, which one do you think is going to have higher production in that offense? Because we had basically come down to the conclusion that all three of Pitts, Bijan and London weren't going to be able to produce in 23. And we were like, it's going to be London because he's, in our opinion, the better talent. I think that still stands true. That's more of a subjective thing that other people may disagree. Yeah, it is subjective. But we do believe that Drake London personal, like I, I believe that Drake London is a better Look, true receiver. Like And like I mentioned, that you use Kyle Pitts as a receiver. We think right. Drake London's the wide receiver one, right. even if you're considering Kyle Pitts more used like a receiver. Right, and what's the argument here for Kyle Pitts? It's TJ Hawkinson, right? That's probably going to be the biggest thing. It's that Addison, yeah. Justin Jefferson, and TJ Hawkinson all produced – at a high level with Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. I hate to break it to you, though. Kyle Pitts is not the same as TJ Hawkinson. Like, I, I'm not just saying that we like Hawk more than Kyle Pitts. Like, as, as, an, as an asset in the NFL, as a weapon, Kyle Pitts does not play the same position as TJ Hawkinson. They may have the same title as tight end, but Kyle Pitts is lining up on the outside. Kyle Pitts functions as a wide receiver. He's more of a Travis Kelsey type tight end than a TJ Hawkinson type tight end. I think it's a valid point. And look, could Kyle Pitts see an uptick in targets and an uptick in production? It's probable he will. But again, we're yeah, we ev- think Drake London everyone in this office We think will. Drake London <laughs> has like a, an early to mid second round dynasty startup pick ceiling. And so we're acting accordingly. Drake London to us could end up being a buy depending on what his value settles at. With with yeah. Kyle Pitts, he's kind of a hold, but we said anything 108 or higher, we're going to we would 
take the 108 or higher for Kyle Pitts. If So if we can sell Kyle Pitts for the 108, you're getting at worst Brock Bowers or Brian Thomas Jr. there, and I'm personally taking both of those guys over Kyle Pitts. Yeah. I think Brock Bowers will end up... I mean, obviously that one's landing spot dependent. But Bijan, I don't think this really changes anything for Bijan. He's going to be Bijan, but I do yeah. think... I, I think Arthur Smith was what changed it for Bijan. But let's yeah. talk about Addison now. Addison, yeah, I mean, we've got to talk about the... the I, think, I think this hurts Jordan Addison. I think Kirk Cousins is a guy that they were willing to let they would throw the ball a ton. The passing volume was there, 4,500 passing yards. I mean, he was playing really really well last year before he got hurt and Jordan Addison you saw his splits without Justin Jefferson I don't have them in front of me but if we could put them on the screens of splits without Justin Jefferson I mean he definitely takes a little bit of a dip when JJ's back on the field and now you do the splits where Kirk Cousins wasn't there for that as well and I do think you know so for, for Addison you have probably seen his value fall from by now I think he's going to fall about around in value so it makes him less of a sell uh, and maybe more of a, like you have to hold at this point. But with Justin Jefferson, it is not a sell. He, he's, I mean, Justin Jefferson is pretty much always a hold. Could Justin Jefferson be a buy? He could if people were really like reacting to this. Most smart dynasty players won't, so he's probably not going to be a buy. Uh, but I mean, for these three guys, I mean, for and then for Hawkinson, Hawkinson, I feel like he's going to be a hold too. I feel like his value is going to go back down half a round, maybe. And I would just hold him at that price because he's Hawkinson. Yeah, if we were to pick a player of the three that's going to take the biggest value knock, it's in our opinion, it's going to be Jordan Addison. Yes. He's a wide receiver too, and Hawkinson is a security blanket for whoever he plays for. I think we saw Hawk, I, I mean, he was able to produce with freaking Nick Mullins consistently, and granted it was without Justin Jefferson when he got injured, so we didn't get to see Addison, Hawk, and Jefferson all play together without Kirk Cousins, I, I don't think, um, because by the time, when, when did when did Hawk tear his ACL? Was it against Cincinnati or Detroit? I can't remember. We I did see Addison Detroit and Jefferson game. play together without him, right? At the end of the season? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We actually we have one game because I was at the game. It was a Cincinnati game. Addison Hawk and J. Jeff without Cousins. J. Jeff had 15 points. Addison had 29, and I think Hawkinson had like 12. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, talk about Saquon Barkley going to the Eagles. Oh my god! What gosh. a gut punch Dude, for the uh, Giants, man. Gut punch for the Giants oh, and right. a real nice value boost for you, Saquon Barkley owners in Dynasty who were, were hoping for a landing spot like this. Honestly, my biggest fear investing in Saquon Barkley this early in the offseason in some startup drafts was, is he going to resign with the Giants? It was my biggest fear. And then I heard whispers of Baltimore, and I was like, oh, yes, please. And then I heard whispers of Philadelphia, and I was like, oh, yes, please. I, I, could, I could do some Saquon in, in Philadelphia. And he goes to Philadelphia on a three-year deal, worth up to $37 million, I believe. And I, I'm all in on the Saquon hype. I'm here. more in than I mean like and, I think it would be hard for me to say he's a sell at this point. Like I, I think I think he if is anything, absolutely I think if anything sell. he's a hold. Because he was going before this deal went down, he was going pretty consistently six in round. the sixth round. Yep. Now he's going probably Eight middle fifth. of the we, middle of the fifth, middle which fifth. is because we just did three mock drafts in our live stream. And if that's where his price is, if it just goes up around, <laughs> yeah. If he's, he's going back to back there. with Josh Jacobs I'll absolutely somebody take like, Saquon over Josh Jacobs. It's not even close. Somebody asked us, like, does this hurt or help Saquon? I was like, uh, uh help. It, it, right? Yeah. It has to help. Yeah. I feel. <laughs> Saquon's gotta stay healthy, I will say that. But but yeah, if unless his value I'm goes honestly, up to like third round, he's the, not a sell. I, I view this situation so similar to Christian McCaffrey. Not that Saquon is gonna produce at the level that McCaffrey has in San Francisco, but the same we had injury questions with CMC going into True. the San Francisco deal. True. But to me, it's the exact same situation because you're going from the Carolina Panthers and Christian McCaffrey where the offense was run through Christian McCaffrey to now San Francisco where, yes, he's a pivotal part in how effective Shanahan's offense is, but the entire offense is not dependent on Christian McCaffrey. He isn't taking the entire load. He has an actual quarterback. He has actual wide receivers that can share some of the load in, in, in that offense. And that means that CMC can actually be hyper productive, more efficient, and not take 30 plus carries or touches a game. Right. And he's not getting destroyed because he's on an actual good offense. Same thing is going to be the case here for Saquon Barkley. He's been banged up the last couple of years. He had a healthy year last season, but he wasn't ultra efficient he wasn't like top of the league efficient he because he was the only was guy the there yeah now yeah. you've put now you're playing with aj brown and devonta smith dallas goddard jalen hurts and saquon barkley like saquon barkley almost feels like the afterthought <laughs> i mean <laughs> Seriously. In, in a way yeah like yeah. when you're talking about that dominant receiver group i i think yes so we told you earlier in the offseason about ty j spears 
Uh, and I think he was a buy. I mean, you're talking about when we were talking about t- buying Tajay Spears, he was with running back 22 ish. Okay. So over from like December, mid December, when we made that video to, you know, mid January and now of, up until today, honestly, uh, he's been around running back 14. So yeah. about the time he eclipsed the running back consistent. 17, 16 mark, we were like, yeah, he's not really a buy anymore. Uh, and we weren't saying to buy him, but now Tajay Spears, obviously getting Tony Pollard there. Tajay Spears, you can't sell. If you drafted Tajay Spears this offseason, you can't sell. If you, I mean, if you drafted him in the rookie drafts last year in the third round, maybe you still can if somebody wants to. But like, usually when guys take it, this is a hit on Tajay's value for sure. Like, it will be perceived as a hit. And so when we get in a dynasty situation where guys have a hit on their value, just like Justin Fields with all the news coming out, you don't sell Justin Fields right now. You don't sell Tajay Spears right now. Yeah. And so Tajay Spears is a hold for sure, a hold, and not even a buy. And Tony Pollard was a buy before he went to the Titans. If his value doesn't go up around, I think he's still probably a buy. Still probably a buy, yeah. I, I would have liked for him to go back to the Cowboys. To me, that was going to be the most ideal situation. But with Tony Pollard, his price has been better since last year. Last year, there's a video clip. Literally, word for word, what I said was, you can brag about t- taking Tony Pollard in the fifth round of your dynasty draft just so he can go in the 11th next year. And that has happened. Exactly. Like, he's going in the 11th round. But the difference is now, like, the 11th round you're not actually investing that much in a player you're drafting in the 11th round. So if you're getting Tony Pollard there and he can give you a season where he's the running back 13 or 12 again, that's a good deal. Yeah. Tony Pollard's also not 27 yet. He's about to be 27, but like yeah, we went from Tony young. Pollard's the, the second coming to Tony Pollard's nothing. It's and not so a we ton of usage way either. too far. So I would say Tony Pollard's close to a buy on this one. Yeah, and I always found it funny just seeing a, a lot of uh, Tony Pollard teams when we do our team blueprints over at flockfantasy.com slash domain. Mm. Uh, I, I would see the teams with Tony Pollard, and I was like, honestly, I, I, I can't tell him to sell him no. because because he's probably going to go sign somewhere and get a nice situation. And no, this wasn't the place that we were expecting in Tennessee, but it'll be interesting to see what happens there. And maybe Ty J actually ends up going somewhere else if they make a trade. I don't know, because I don't really see their skill sets matching up. I just think it's kind of an odd situation. But yeah, if you want to get one of those team blueprints, it's a customizable um, thing, uh, which I say all the time, where we give you advice on your roster whether it's a dominant roster a rebuild team where you need a ton of help you know we're we're here to help you uh Mm -hmm. really figure this out and get better at dynasty fantasy football when your leagues win money some of your some buys that you can go target in your leagues and it comes with the rookie draft guide it comes with our own personal advice you can get in our dms and ask us questions about your roster other teams really anytime you want have to use code domain over at flockfantasy.com slash domain Use code domain, sign up for the Mother Flocker tier, and submit your roster for a team blueprint in the team blueprint. Hey, this is channel. fun. We get 100 Mother Flocker signups this month, and we stay up all night for a live stream. Nathan's yeah. thrilled about that one. Thrilled, and it was my idea. And it was his idea. What do you think about Swifty? I mean, he's going late seventh round now, right now in Dynasty. Totally, totally cool with the price, man. Hold, totally cool with hold the or price. Hold or buy. He's, I think he's a hold. Okay. Um, I'm, so, so not not like his price is so good it's buy, but you're holding no. him. Yeah, I think we know what DeAndre Swift is. And DeAndre Swift last year played behind the best offensive, one of the best offensive lines in the NFL in the Eagles, and he was still, you know, an okay running back. Now, granted, he was a lot more productive the first half of the season when the Eagles were better, and then they started to fall off the cliff, and they started stopped giving him the ball. Right. And so he didn't really get much opportunity towards the end of the year anyways. So I kind of give him a little bit of a pass there. Chicago, much different situation. Not as great of an offensive line. Probably going to be playing with Caleb Williams, though. So Justin yeah. Fields, all y'all Justin Fields truthers, um, I, I, I don't think Fields is going to be starting for Chicago next year, which means there's going to be a lot of rushing opportunity. Uh, Khalil Herbert is not the second coming. I, I think DeAndre Swift <laughs> actually is going to have room to be Decently productive. I wouldn't say hyper efficient because I think at this point we know that that's just not the type of running back he is. But for a security blanket as a running back that has receiving upside for someone like Caleb Williams to just dump it off for, especially behind an offensive line that isn't going to be anything elite or super special, like this could be really, really helpful for the rookie QB that the Bears decide to bring in. And I'm I'm optimistic that he'll be productive, especially for you contenders. He's a pretty safe investment in the seventh round. Yeah, I I think I agree with that analysis. So let's turn to Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs. Obviously, signing with the Packers. This is a big deal. And they release Aaron Jones. I'm going to start. Hey, this is my first one on this video. Mm-hmm. Josh Jacobs is a hard sell for me. Yes. Josh Jacobs is a yes. guy that back has to back with Saquon. <laughs> going, when, when we were doing, and this, of course, it probably won't end up like this, but the initial reaction was Josh Jacobs was going in the fifth round, the end of the fifth. Him and Saquon went back to back in like almost every single one of our drafts, mm-hmm. every single one. And 
While I don't expect that to stick, here's what people aren't realizing in the, the, the missing detail that really makes this a crucial hard sell in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Yeah, so people think that this, at face value, is a four-year, $48 million deal for Josh Jacobs. Which is how it's and reported. And at face value, Good for that's how it was reported. That's true. So everyone sees that. They're like, oh, an extra year. That's more than Saquon Barkley. Obviously, Saquon Barkley is a little bit better, but take the contract insulation and Josh Jacobs in a nice situation in Green Bay and take him back to back same time in the fifth round. Uh, you want to know what the real deal is? It's a one year deal, $14.8 million and three Packer option years. That's according to Andrew Brandt on X. That is <laughs> ridiculous contract structuring right there. So basically, it's so basically he can every suck. single year until he sucks, and then the Packers can just cut him, and they're not out anything which, at all. Which plot to us, like, Josh Jacobs hasn't really, wasn't really that good last year. He was very inefficient. If he comes in and sucks it up this year, the Packers just draft another running back, and, and they let him and go. And he's dead, totally valueless. So, yeah. like, you're investing in the fifth a round in a running back who's a total crapshoot. Like, you may as well invest in a running back on the franchise tag like last year. Like, he just got, so. he just got a value bump. Bye bye. Aaron Jones, on the other hand, I've seen him going like he's dropped down to the twelfth round a lot in dynasty startups. I'll buy. He's f- exact he's opposite. He's gonna he is gonna go somewhere and be productive. Aaron Jones still hey, he's he's got some in him still. I, I'm oh, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna buy Aaron Jones. Austin Eckler, a two year deal with the Washington Commanders. Obviously, it's not L A. But it's a Cliff Kingsbury offense, and yeah. he's gonna be splitting time with Brian Robinson. We would assume. Yes. And that's the type of duo that you would expect for a guy like Austin Eckler. He has never been a bell cow running back. He has always been hyper efficient and hyper productive given his receiving upside with 50% snap share. And that's probably what you're going to get from him in Washington. Is it going to be like his production was a couple years ago in LA? No, probably not. I, I would be surprised if it was even close to that, but at his current price, with the deal and with the situation with a new quarterback coming in, this is the same type of situation as I was saying with DeAndre Swift. You're getting a new quarterback, you have a security blanket and a running back that you can dump the ball off to consistently and is expendable. Austin Eckler will be expendable, which means he'll probably get a decent amount of volume. That's true. All right, we've got nine guys here that we're going to give you a verdict on a little bit more quickly. Russell Wilson, I think Russell Wilson's a hold at this point. Like, I'm not going and buying Russell Wilson because he's on a one-year deal and he's bad and he's on the Steelers <laughs> the now Steelers and he's owe Arthur Smith. $1 million dollars yeah for russell I, the, wilson the broncos <laughs> obviously oh man that stinks for them but russ to me hey, is, made their own is just a hold if you have him deontay johnson this is an interesting one uh yeah deontay johnson is going to be a guy who uh is going to really go under the radar because of all these moves that have happened uh today we're recording this on monday march 11th while all these crazy moves have happened but with deontay johnson and i just I see him and I see Russ and I see a connection that could be pretty valuable in in fantasy and in dynasty for Deontay's value next year. Not saying that Russell Wilson is some amazing savior for the Steelers. Guess what? They're probably going to be nine and eight next year. Um, but <laughs> and Russ, make the playoffs. I, I, yeah. But w- the thing with Russ is like he he wasn't benched because he was playing horrible football. He was playing a lot better than he did in 2022, which, you know, doesn't take much, but he was playing all right. And they were winning with him. The reason they benched him is because Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos knew that they were going to have to get out of the contract. They, they at tried some to get point, him to like, and they knew they were going to have to rebuild. They, they didn't want to pay. He wasn't worth what they were going to pay him. And that was their mistake. It wasn't Russ's fault. So the memes were good, though. They, they were. They were very good. So with that being said, I think Russell Wilson going into Pittsburgh, you have to assume that he's going to be the starting quarterback and he's going to be able to provide volume for Deontay Johnson and even George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth. But I, I would say, like, of those wide receivers, who's the best route runner and who's the most Johnson. reliable receiver? Johnson. Who, who, it's yeah, Deontay who Johnson. the most targets? Johnson. Right, and you can say George Pickens, but, like, literally, look up his success ra- rate in terms of the routes that he runs. And jo- Look, George Pickens is George catch- Pickens is George Pickens. It was, it was impressive that George Pickens did what he did with, with Kenny Pickett at quarterback. But George Pickens is always, in my opinion, like, I, I'm pivoting to somebody else. Yeah. It, it, same thing here. Yeah. Same thing here. Yeah. Um, Gardner Minshew is a buy for us in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Yeah. I, I, we'd give a late second for Gardner Minshew. So if you can send a late second and go get Gardner, Gardner's probably going to be a starter for two years. Um, again, late That's second. That's crazy. Late second, you're talking about a dart throw, but I think people will do that deal. Um, let's see. Michael Pittman, obviously getting, you know, really good contract, a team-friendly contract. I think he's a sell. I do too. I yeah. do too. And that's coming from Go Horse, Go Horse, Go Horse, uh, filming in Indianapolis. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what else. Yeah. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. 
He's very safe. He gets a ton of targets. He had like 165 targets last year. Um, he's a low end wide receiver one, high end wide he's receiver going into three, two. Four turn. He's value equivalent to Drake London right now, according to our most London. recent mocks with the Kirk Cousins news. Drake London's ceiling is so much higher. Drake, Drake London with a higher ceiling and a better passing quarterback. You've got to take London there. Yeah. Um, now I will also say this is a little. This isn't really super relevant. I I've been thinking this is this is a you thing. This is a me thing. I've been leaning Josh Downs as a sell, and I love. This is coming from the guy that loved Josh Downs when he was in college, loved him coming into the draft, was very high on him, and like freaked out live on camera when he was picked to the Colts. I have a gut feeling that they're going to draft another pass catching weapon. He I, thinks it's Bowers. I think it could be I Bowers or Thomas Jr. Maybe. I think I think they could end up using their first on on a guy. I think they could also draft a cornerback. It's one of the two. I don't think there's any other possibility there. But with Downs, I feel like the odds are against him becoming like a wide receiver two uh, annually even. So at wide receiver like 35 prices, I'm kind of like, I you know, I'd rather just pivot to somebody I think has a higher ceiling. Again, that's a me take. But that's just something I wanted to mention here. Next guy on this list is Gabe Davis. Yeah, Gabe Davis got a nice contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars. They also brought in um, the GOAT, Devin DuVernay. So as long as the Jags keep making those moves in free agency, they're gonna win the Super I'm Bowl. happy as a Colts fan because they're stupid. But uh, Gabe Davis... Actually, th- this is the this is the contract that we were waiting for. You know, it it was a situation that you know we were hoping that he'd go to a different situation where he could get some more volume. I think at this point we know that the Jags are going to let Ridley walk because if they re-sign him to a deal, they owe a second round pick to the Atlanta Falcons this year, if I'm not mistaken, and that would be stupid re-signing a 30 year old wide receiver. They have a lot of need for that second round pick. So bringing in Gabe Davis, losing Calvin Ridley, it's basically Christian Kirk and Gabe Davis because Zay Jones has an out this year, which I think they're going to decline everything after this year. Probably. So uh, I think Zay Jones is done. So Gabe Davis is again probably year two, and uh, he's going past the eleventh round of dynasty drafts. Right, right. right. So, so maybe a fresh situation will help him be buy. a little more consistent, kind of like it was with Christian Kirk in Jacksonville. So soft buy. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, uh, Gibby signed with the Pats. I do think Gibby's the most talented back in New England now. To be fair, uh, I think Gibby with Jaden Daniels could be interesting if they end up going that route in the draft. Uh, he's not really expensive. I'm kind of neutral on him, but it was just an interesting one I wanted to mention. You could buy him if you wanted to. He's really cheap. And then T. Higgins. A lot of people have asked us what to do with T. Higgins. I think he's going to end up... I don't think they're going to end up wanting to trade him. I think eventually he ends up on a new team, but I think he plays for the Bengals this year. That's just a gut feeling. And I think he's just he's just a hold right now. You just have to hold T. Higgins. So. Yeah, and, and if you're wondering uh, why we didn't mention Devin Singletary going to the Giants, it's because um, it, 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 it doesn't really matter to us. <laughs> so, again, analysis of kind of what's went down. What I mean, we're doing this on Monday. I'm sure tomorrow, Tuesday, there's going to be more moves that we have missed in this video. Yeah. So just l- let us know in the comments what you're doing with the guys that have now new landing spots after today's, you know, Monday's news. But do us a huge favor. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you go over to flockfantasy.com slash domain if you want to get a team blueprint you want to get our 2024 rookie draft guide and you want us to stay up all night and do a live stream and watch nathan suffer appreciate you guys so much we'll see you later